Can you get it? Say amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good for the Lord is good for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations we thank you all today oh God for bringing us here together in one mind to set on you oh God in the name of Jesus but first of all we like to repent for anything we said or done or even thought that was contrary to your will and your way oh God in the name of Jesus Lord God we just thank all today, oh God, that you ordered our steps, oh God, that you led us straight here without any harm, hurt, or danger, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you all today that this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you that you sent your Son, your only begotten Son, your only begotten Son on the cross to die for all of our sins, oh God. We thank you for it, oh God.
Have your way in this place, Lord. Yes, God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Yes, Lord God. Yes, come on, come on. I'm going to kick some of you in Tennessee.
I want to welcome everybody to New Beginnings Outreach International. Thank everybody watching YouTube and Instagram. I want to say God bless you and welcome, hallelujah, to New Beginnings Outreach International. Everybody had a good week thus far? Amen. Everybody had a good week. Praise God. We thank God for a good week. Amen. We thank God for another day, like Mama said. One more day. Amen. We thank God for one more day. Amen. But that's one more day you can expect. And one more day to have manifestation come to your life. If you don't throw in the towel. Amen. If you don't give up. Amen. You got to keep going. Amen. You got to keep striving. Glory to God. If you get knocked down, jump back up. Amen. Don't worry about it. Amen. Get glad. Amen. We thank God for that. And today we're going to uh, tie up the, the finishing part of stewardship. Uh, shipwreck, that's the name of this series this, this month, uh, it's a new month but in May we are uh, talking about get off that ship, abandon ship if you don't get off that ship, you're bound to drizzle, amen and we want to get you on a ship, a fellowship stewardship, discipleship amen, so today we're going to finish that up and uh, we're going to flow with it, amen, so now you guys can see what I've been talking about and here is all our notes and I got the scriptures on there as well so if you got your notepads, you can Get the notes right from there. Amen. Amen. And we praise God for the new little TV. I'm going to give you guys a quick testimony of how that came about. The Lord has already been giving me instructions on what to do. Amen. Yes. Phase one was to get this location. That was in October. We thank God for that. Phase two was to get the children's ministry and to get our media up and running. Amen. The way that we want to do it. Amen. So we can show people the scripture readings and everything. Phase three was me and my wife getting back to music. Amen. And doing what we need to do. Phase four, ordained leadership. And we had to do all that before today. Amen. So I said, Lord God, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it by faith. By Amen. Faith. I said, Lord God, um, I don't know what we're going to do. So make a long story short, we completed every phase, but I was 98% done with phase two. Amen. Phase two was to get the screen that we wanted. Amen. So I had money to the side for it. Amen. And uh, this week, last, around this time last week, I was doing the tithes and offering, and we was $100 short from what we needed to make uh, for the week. So I said, Lord God, what are we going to do? He said, do not deposit nothing. I said, don't deposit nothing. Okay. He said, don't even deposit the money you made in the barbershop. I said, okay, okay. So on Tuesday, I'm like, man, Lord God, I have to do what I have to do because this stuff has to be done because you told me what to do. So I told my wife, I said, get to Sam's right now. She said, huh? I said, get to Sam's right now. So we went over there and purchased the TV, but at the same time, it's a pastor who been, you know, giving your pastor some good nuggets, amen? So I was like, you know what, I'm going to let you know what I got going on. So he was like, man, I want to be a blessing to your ministry. I said, well, praise God. He said, what you trying to do? I said, this is what I'm trying to do. He said, okay, that's going to be like seven to $900. I said, yeah, it is. He said, okay, okay. So he said, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to try to sow seed into your life. I said, well, praise God. Amen. He said, uh, we're going to do $210. I said, well, praise God. I said, that's what's up. You know, whenever you know it, it's all good. But the whole time I had to have faith. We was already $100 short, right? The Lord said, do not deposit nothing, right? So I said, okay, Lord. We got the screen, got the TV. So I'm just sitting there waiting. I looked up. He said, the same amount that I needed to make up for that one week. Praise God. Praise God. He sent the same amount that I needed. Nothing but God. Nothing but God. So I was $100 short, but by my faith, I was missing and see what the Lord told me to do. He said, I know you want to put the money in what you made this way. I know you want to put it in, but don't put nothing because I'm going to show you what type of $375 each week. We only have $275. The Lord said, don't do nothing. So that by that Wednesday and that Tuesday, I had the $375. Glory to God. Some of y'all may not get that yet. I was a hundred short for what we needed. But he said, don't do nothing. And do what I told you to do. Be still and do what I told you to do. I wanted you to have that done before Sunday. I said, Lord God, I don't. and I didn't even deposit my own money. So I used my own money to come up and make the difference. Amen. Amen. But the money I spent myself came right back to the church. Come on. But it don't stop there. On that money, I had to get some new CDs. So I spent three forty dollars to get some new CDs. But it was a blessing. Like the lady who did them, it's a married couple. I said, you know what? The bank's closed, but we not. We sold a seed on Monday when the banks was closed. So then on Tuesday, we sold another seed. Then on Wednesday, it came right back. Amen. Once you do the things of the kingdom, you can understand this is all God. And not me. Amen. All God. Because I was being a 
good steward. That's right. That's right. Amen. So what you see is a result. Praise God. Thank God for pastors. We thank God for the other pastors too. Amen. We thank God for other pastors who have a heart for ministry. Amen. This is our second year anniversary. We come in. I praise God for it. But we had no launch team. We had no thousands of dollars together to get it. Amen. Everything you see and everything we got is by faith. By faith. Because we listen to the Lord. God, whatever you tell us to do, we're going to do it. Lord God, even though we don't have the money, we're going to do it anyway. Because favor can get you what money can. Favor can get you what money can. Amen. So we thank God for that. Amen. So, you know, this is something we're trying to get, you know, going on. So it's rare when this is our first day doing it. And we're going to try to perfect it as we go on. Amen. So we just thank God for, you know, the things that's coming, man. I'm excited. I, I'm thank God that I completed everything he told me to do. Amen. Before the day. Hallelujah. So I just want to, that's my testimony. Amen. How the Lord deals with pastor. The Lord deals with me. He speaks to me. So I want to make sure that I execute the thing. And everything that I'm telling you is the stuff he's telling me. So it's time for you to execute what I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to tell you nothing to leave you wrong. I want you to be blessed. Amen. I want you to live and have a blessed life. Amen. Because you can't tell nobody nothing if you ain't been through nothing. You can't tell nobody how good God is if he ain't been good to you for real. Amen. So we want to thank God for that. So Pastor got his testimony out the way. Hallelujah. Stewardship. Everybody say stewardship. Stewardship. Amen. Stewardship. stewardship. And I put this down so as I'm reading, y'all gonna read with me. Amen. We got notes. Take your notes. We, what we want to do now, chapter two, that's what we call second year. Yeah. Chapter two. We want to get the people in the body of Christ in the kingdom to their next God-given potential. Yeah. Amen. We don't want to just come to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday going through the same thing. That's the devil. That's the devil. If you don't get nothing from the Lord and you don't change your life differently, that's nobody's fault but yours. Amen. We want you to get to the place you need to be. First of all, because time is running out, we want to get you to eternity in heaven and not hell. Amen. We preach the Holy Ghost. We preach against sin. We love you. We want to love the sin out of you. Amen. So you can walk in peace. Amen. So I put this down in my notes. So these are my notes I'm sharing with y'all. I said I ain't going to have nothing. I want to feed the sheep. Amen. So just flow with me. It says, I have learned so much, and I've been so encouraged and equipped from these series to be getting pure meat and fresh green grass. Amen. And I put up out, how about y'all grinding it out with me? Amen. Have you guys been empowered? Have you guys been encouraged? Amen. Of what the Lord is doing. Amen. And as believers, we must learn how to balance out our lives. Amen. Do not leave God out in the balancing. A lot of people want to do things their own, they own way or say, I can get myself together, but they want to leave God out. Amen. We got to make sure God is in. We got to make sure he's in our boat, on our ship. Amen. I put this down. Do not leave God. Do not leave God. Don't put God down so you can take a break to balance your life. Don't do it. Because when you're doing that, you're putting your, yourself in a harm's way. You set yourself up for failure. Amen. The Lord wants to bless you. And he don't want to, you know, have you keep going through the stuff that you're going through. True, you know, pride has kept everybody going through something. Amen. So that means if you're going through something, you want to get out of that same thing. And if you don't, it's going to be the same cycle. Same cycle. Amen. Same cycle. Amen. We want you to be blessed. It says, here's the definition of steward. Amen. So if you got your pen and paper, there's a definition right there. Amen. We want to start empowering you. We, we know that it's different things that's inside of your spirit. And they need to be stirred up. Amen. It's evangelists, prophets, teachers, preachers, all that inside of you. Amen. So we want to pull that out. Amen. It's going to take a, a community effort. Amen. Because you can reach somebody that I can't. Amen. You can reach somebody that I can't. Amen. So that's what we got to do. We got to empower you with the word. And steward. It says, one who manages another's property, finances, or affairs. One who is in charge of a household affairs or large estate, club, hotel. It says, a ship's officer who is in charge of provisions. Amen. We've been talking about a ship all month. Amen. So when I seen this, I said, Lord, you're awesome. It says, an attendant on the ship or airplane, an official or su someone who supervises or helps manages an event. Amen? So basically, we know what a steward is. It's someone who has somebody else's property. Somebody who has somebody else's property. Amen? We ain't going to read that scripture, but that's going to be something we might use later on. Because that's a lot of words. I don't know if y'all you know, ready to get in there that deep. So our first scripture reading today is going to be Luke 12, 42 through 46. 
stewardship. Everything we got is not ours, it's the Lord's. Everything that we have is not ours, it's the Lord's. Everything that you got is the Lord's. You just manage it. Once we understand that, we ain't going to do it any kind of way. Amen? Luke 12, 42 through 46. I can keep rolling because the scripture is the only thing. Amen? It says, and the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler of his household to give him their portion and meat in due season? Amen. That's one thing. Some people don't want to wait for their season. Or they do season. They want to throw in the towel before it's over with. Amen. But you can't do it. 43 says, Blessed is that servant, servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Glory to God. 44. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if he that servant says in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat his man servants and maidens, and to eat and drink. And to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in the day when he looketh not for him. And in that hour when he is not aware, he will cut him asunder and will appoint his portion to un unbelievers. So what that is saying is if you're not working and you put God to the side and you try to balance your life and then you get caught working and not working for God, it's destruction. The message Bible, it reads this. It says, the master said, let me ask you, who is the dependable manager? Full of common sense that the master puts in charge of his staff to feed them well and on time. He is a blessed man if the master shows up and he's doing his job. But if he says to himself, the master is certainly taking his time, begins maltreating his servants and maids, throwing parties for his friends and getting drunk, the master will walk in when he least expects it. Give him his ration of his life and put him back in the kitchen pillar potatoes. Yeah. Amen. So what he's saying is if you're not doing what you're supposed to do when you come on the kingdom side, the Lord will be looking at you and say, you think I'm wasting time. Uh -huh. Amen. I'm just I'm just watching you, but you think that I'm not coming. Uh -huh. Amen. You thinking that I'm not coming. Everybody say Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. But everybody want to do their own thing. Everybody want to do their own thing because he ain't came yet. Jesus ain't came yet. I got a little more time to turn up. Jesus ain't came yet. I got a little more time to do what I want to do on this side. The devil is a lie. He's coming back. And not only is he coming back, but he's watching. Question mark. It says, are you dependable? Are you dependable? Glory to God. Can the Lord depend on you? Can he trust you with the things he gives you? Question mark. You got to think about them things. Lord God, I want all of this in my life. I want a house, I want a car, I want a house on a hill, I want this, I want... But he said, can I trust you? If I give you these things, can I still trust you? You're going to still believe in me when I give it to you. It's about being a good steward. Everything that we got is not ours. Amen? It's the Lord's. Stewardship. It says, he is a blessed man if when the master comes and shows he is doing his job. It says, do you work hard just when your boss is around? That's a question. Yes, Pastor, when I was working the steel mill, amen. If they walk off, I'm shut on it back. What's up? I'm working that steel. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, we're on 20 minutes to break. I'm going to the bathroom. I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> Come on. Keep it real. Uh, amen. I want to make sure that hey, I give me an extra rest, but when he comes around, I'm starting to work. Hey, uh, Pastor. Hey. We got to get it in. Amen. It says. You know when he's around, you work hard, amen. And when you go from that area, you try to do your best, amen. Let's take it a step further. Do you work for God on Sunday or when we worship our master together? Be quiet as a mouse. <laughs> or some crickets. Chirp, chirp. <laughs> Crickets walk out, hold up. Church mouses, amen. The Lord's trying to take us to another place. The Lord's trying to take us to another place. And when you get took to another place, it's going to be uncomfortable. If we stay in where we are, we're going to be lost. And it says, but since it's Sunday, you can begin to loaf on the job, wait, amen. But it says, being Christian, it's our job. Because we got to work hard. Being a new creature. When the world pulls at you, amen, and you know what it has to offer, you know what the world has to offer. You feel good. You lose your flesh. 
You don't want to hear about what Pastor talking about. He's driven. It's Sunday. It's my off day. It's uncomfortable. But it's hard work being a new creature. Amen. It's nothing stopping me from going to Corral Liquor and turning up. But me. We have a choice. Amen. A choice to do good and a choice to be bad. Or whatever we want to do. Amen. Like I said, the world pulls at you. They got all the commercials. They got all the pop culture doing, you know, commercials and stuff. Oh, man, that's tight. You know, influence. Stewardship. There comes the balancing. Amen. Being in the world, but not of it. You can have good, clean, Christian fun. Amen. But don't go past the limit. You know, a lot of people say, man, I know, I know Christians. You know, they still drink. I said, that's cool. That's, that's on y'all. I don't drink, amen. I even sat with a couple of pastors one time. He said, man, I drink uh, beer uh, when I eat fish. I said, that's cool. I don't. You know what I mean? Because I know when I got it in, I ain't just trying to take a sip. I smoke, I smoke in boxes of guts. Back in the days, you know how long ago I smoked. I smoked Optimals. A, a box of Optimals, amen. And if you wouldn't match in a box of Optimals, I don't want to smoke. So that means you need five blunts that's going to roll up real fat. So you're going to need about a half ounce to match with me. I'm going to smoke you under the table. And I'm just keeping it real. And when I grab a drink, I want a Hennessy. Straight. I don't need nothing. It ain't got to be cold or nothing. I'm turning up. So why would I even play with that? Why would I open my spirit up to that? But I'm just telling you what I done did. Amen. I don't ever try to point fingers at nobody, but I just tell you what I done did was kept me for going on 11 years. Amen. Ain't nothing, I still know what it looked like, still know what it smelled like, amen. And probably still got the connects, but the devil is alive. Amen. But you can't go past your limit. Amen. If you know that's an area that you're having trouble in, don't do it. Amen. If you're trying to change and you're trying to balance, do not do it. Amen. Because the master will soon come. Yes, he is. It says, uh, you know, <laughs> you can go far as you want, amen, but you know, it'll cost you everything. It'll cost you everything. Amen. When I think of the stuff that I gave up, amen, I said, Lord God, I'm going to give up all of that so I can get you, and then you're going to give me all that my heart desires. That's right. That's right. Amen. When I was going through my life, excuse me, I said, you know what, I want to get me a little red bone. I always like the light skin girls. He said, give me a little red bone, pretty girl. You know what I mean? I was speaking that thing into existence. So I would always try to find me a red bone. <laughs> every step. Which one is it? I went through many of them. But it wasn't the one. But I had to find out, hey, let me let me get myself together. Let me bag up. Let me let God do this. Right. And not me. Right. Then I found my wife. Amen? Amen? And that's what I say. You know, Lord, I thank you. As I'm seeking you, gave up everything. Now you're giving me the things that I really need that's going to bless my life. And it's going to bless others as they see a result. You know what? He gave up everything and got everything. He gave up everything and got everything. People are like, man, that don't make sense. You got to empty out to get filled up in the kingdom. It says, I can't put new wine in an old wine skin. I can't put this new kingdom teaching in something that you've been living the whole life, tradition and religion. I can't fill that up. So that means I got to clean all that up out of you. Then I can fill you. That's what the Lord want to do. He want to fill us. Fill us with, with good thinking, good good talking, good good manner, whatever you got to do. And you can still be you. Amen. When I came into the kingdom of God, I said, I don't want to you know, change my hair, my, my teeth, or none of that. I just want to be me. And the Lord said, come, my son. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. It says, but well, we got to be mindful. We are still at work. Amen. Like I just told y'all about the testimony of smoke weed. I already told y'all that. They say, but we want to make sure that we getting our work in but when the master returns. Amen. So we got to continue to work. Work till he comes. Amen. Because we want to be promoted. Yes, yes. Amen. You can put that note down. I want to be promoted. Amen. I want to earn my spot in heaven. But it will take work. It will take work. Ain't nobody just going to heaven just because you believe in God. Because, you know what I mean, even when they say you can go, you know, and do this, do that, you can still be a devil. Or it's, it's pastors that's doing stuff just like the world. It says it's going to be gnashing the teeth. 
It's going to be passing like, man, I'm going to save thousands and thousands of people, amen. And I can't get in. So if even the clergy behind a pulpit can't get in, what that makes, we, we got to do something different. Amen. It's, it, it's so much going on, and I want to tell you the truth. I want everybody to make it in. Amen. Because I'm striving to get in. Amen. We're going to get it in. Amen. A steward. We got to be a good steward. I want a spot in heaven. Be a steward of your time. Use your time wisely because it is borrowed time from our man. Amen. Like I hear a little testimony, I put down and say, I've been going by schedule to make sure that I have things in proper order to use my 24 hours at my best ability. I had to repent one day because I said there is not enough time in this day. I said, Lord God, I'm sorry. He said, man, it's my time better. I said, Lord God, I apologize because I don't want to waste your time. I'm doing everything that I want to do, but I'm not putting you in this. So I had to repent. People are like, man, why you go to appointments? I had to do stuff differently because I want to hear from the Lord. I want to make sure that when he talks to me, I can listen. When he's giving me instructions, I can know what he's saying and know that it's his voice and not another. Timeliness. I'm a sticker on time. I used to be behind, but once I came in control of my time, I got a little better and realized that I can be on time if I prepare properly. Amen. Amen. I know what time, especially if I set a time. If I set a time, I got to be there. Yeah. Amen. So the, the Lord, you be on, listen, you want to be at work on time. Uh -huh. Right? Amen. Everybody work? Amen. You got to do it. Like you doing it unto the Lord, I mean unto the boss, the Lord wants you to do it unto him. Yeah. We put too many worldly things over our God. Oh, it's tight, but it's right, y'all. He want to take us to another level in stewardship. Stewardship. It says, also, my grandpa, I always got to talk about Papa. He was heavy on me about time. He was heavy, so I did my best to be on time, especially if I said it. Amen. Treasure. Exclamation point. Now, it's going to be good. It's really going to be quiet now. Money. Job. Finances. Moolah, dust, frags, duffers, pecos, link, EBT, food stamps, social security, whatever you yeah, got. Come on. That's your treasure. What bread? Pastor call it bread. Peso. Whatever you got, that is your treasure. Come on. Amen. The Lord gives you power to get wealth. Amen. From your job, from your own business. Amen. And the key is how you manage it. Are you being a good steward of it? Small or large, whatever it is, amen, use it wisely. When it comes in, Lord God, I thank you, I dedicate this to you. You know what I mean? Lord God, I thank you, I'm going to bless this person. Lord God, I thank you, I'm going to bless this. It's, it's, it's wise, amen? Glory to God. I always say these two things. The most valuable thing is time and money. You can't get time back and it's hard to make money. Like when I was little, they say, money don't grow on trees. Lord Jesus. Sowing and reaping is a principle. You have to give. So it can be given to you. Yeah. Acts of kindness. Buy someone some coffee, gas, offer it in the church. Amen. It all comes back in the form of a harvest. Amen. Yeah. If you do it a lot, the Bible says bountifully, you will reap and receive bountifully. Yeah. But if you do it sparingly, you will get a little sparingly. Amen. You might get a little seed here and there. Amen. A little seed here and there. Amen. But this is what the Lord talked to me. He said, don't let greed kill your seed. Amen. Don't let greed kill your seed. And that's one of my reflections. Amen. I got a little thing called reflections and I say little positive things. Amen. Don't let greed kill your seed. That I will keep this for myself. Church, they ain't getting none of my money this week. I don't want to give up my money. I got a plan. Don't let greed Kill your seed. Yes. Matthew 25. I'm going to read this in the, in the scripture of the message Bible. It's all mixed up, but this, this is what, what it says. It says, It is also like a man go, going off on an extended trip. He called his servants together and delegated responsibilities to him. One he gave $5,000 to another $2,000 to the one gave $1,000, depending on their abilities. Then he left right off. The first servant went to work and doubled his master's investment. The second did the same. But the man with the single 1,000 dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. After a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled up with them. The one gave $5,000. He showed him that he had doubled his investment. His master commanded him, good work. You, you did well. Job well. Amen. It says, for now, 
on be my partner. It says the servant who had 2,000 showed he also had to double his master's investment. His master commanded him, good work. You did your job well. For now on, be my partner. It says the servant giving 1,000 master said, I know you have high standards, master. I'm putting my little paraphrase in there. I hate careless ways that you demand the best and no, and make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you, so I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, and down to the last cent. 27, uh, 26 to 27 says, the master was furious. He said, that's a terrible way to live. It's, a crimi it's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? It says, the least you could have done has been to invest some of that with bankers, where at least you would got a little interest. 28 and 30. It says, take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most. And get rid of this, play it safe. Who wouldn't go out on a limb, throw him out into outer, outer darkness. And in the King James Version, what that is talking about, a talent. He buried his talent. And what he said is, get back away, uh, you worker of iniquity. I know you not. And then he also says, well done, my good and faithful servant. So that's where this comes in at. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. But it says, don't let greed kill your seed. Because you're being so cautious. No, I ain't going to be in church that they ask for too much money. And, oh, Lord, no. I'm going to hold my own money. But I'm going to tell you something. When I gave up everything, I got everything. That's that's kingdom. We're trying to get the people out of that, that, that the, the lack mentality or get out of that place where you're stuck at. Amen. When you give your all to God, he going to give his all to you. That's where your cup runneth over because your cup can't hold what the Lord gives you. Amen. Amen. This will be my first money message ever. But this ain't just on money though. Amen. And then it goes on. It says, not planting any seeds. How can you expect the harvest? Listen. It says, not showing respect. How can you expect respect? Not showing honor. How can you expect honor? Life is full of principles. Being a good steward, amen, helps you along the way in your life. You get a kingdom perspective. Amen. Talking and preaching about stewardship is hard. And that's what we're going through right now. The Lord already put this down. It says talking and preaching about stewardship is hard subject. Because it seems like the church wants your money. No. The church wants you walking in freedom. The church wants you walking in freedom. Because y'all praying for a blessing. But he said if you're not faithful over the little things that I give you. How can you be faithful over much? This is kingdom talk, y'all. This is kingdom talk. We got to make sure that we're going to be blessed holistically. Amen? Now, this is real talk, Pastor, but real talk. Pastor Ruth, if you're spending your money on everything else and not giving the church no money, when you down and out, you come to the church. Amen? That makes no sense. But if you sow, you shall reap. Many times, I will sow my last and my best. Amen? And when I saw how I never lost anything, I realized that it was because my seed and I was a good steward. So that was just letting you know, hey, I, I, when, when the pastor would talk about this stuff, I didn't want to listen to it. But that was the very thing that almost killed my seed because I wanted to keep it to myself. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I wanted to keep my respect to myself. Uh -huh. Amen. I wanted people to respect me, amen, but I wasn't giving respect. Life is about principles. I, I, I wanted them to honor me, but I wasn't giving honor. Uh -huh. It's giving. It's giving. Amen. And like I said, it took time, but when that light bulb came off, Amen. In my head, I believe for bigger things. So I started to sow it to the kingdom. Big. Exclamation point. B-I-G. Amen. I started sowing big with my time, talents, and all. It's a little testimony again. Pastor gave up $8,000. See, all that I had. And I put this down in parentheses. No way am I asking for all your money. That's foolishness. Any church asking you for all your money, that's foolishness. I'm never a, a begging minister or pastor or none of that, so I'm just breaking it down so you can be blessed in your life. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I, I don't want you to think that I'm on your money, but I want you to think kingdom. Because yeah. the money you have now, you're going to keep it anyway. The money you have now didn't get us where we are now. So it's not about the money. Amen? I sacrifice my own so I can get more from God. Amen? So that's what I want you guys to understand. Pastor, he ain't asking about my money. You know what I mean? He want me to be blessed with my own money. Amen? I'm not those pastors that say, if you give me a million dollars, you'll be blessed. That's foolishness. If, if somebody come to you and say, give me all the money you got, that's foolishness. But only if the Lord tells you to give it. If the Lord tells you to do it, 
Do what the Lord says. Amen. I want you guys to think kingdom. Amen. And this is key. Amen. But if I wasn't in position, meaning I had something on the side as I was sowing, I would have missed it. Amen. We would have missed out on the opportunity to be in this facility right now. Hey, if I was just spending my money frivolously and going around, oh, I'm going to get these. I'm going to get these J's. Um, Pastor only shops twice a year. Only. Twice a year. Amen. And I ain't shopped. What, my first time shopping was what? Last month? Amen. Because I said, Lord God, I got to be a better steward of what I'm doing. Amen. I want to sow into the king. I want to sow to where I want to go. I want to bless somebody. And every time I would get new clothes, I would give all them other clothes away. Kingdom. Kingdom. It's not you want nothing physically. You want something from the Lord. Amen. You're being a good steward of what he gives you. Amen. So you can make room for others. Like I said, you can't fill nothing new with something old. You go through your closet and like, you know what? I want to go shopping. I ain't got no money, but I'm going to give all these away. Because I'm expecting my closet to be filled. Amen. It's a kingdom. It don't sound right in the world. Oh, man, you're going to give all your clothes away. You ain't got nothing now. But it's, I'm standing on faith. Amen. I don't care if I got to wash these shoes every night. Amen. I'm standing on faith. I'm going to get something because I'm giving. I'm giving it. Amen. I'm trying to be a blessing. I'm going to be a steward. Stewardship. My time I manage and better with my money as well. I budgeted it. Amen. Better with my seed. Amen. And a greater risk I took because it was for the work. We're still talking about the work. We're still talking about the work. Everything that the Lord gives you is for the work. Amen. You go to work, amen, for the work, but we're really kingdom building. Amen. We're trying to get it, people to a place in their mind, amen, that we're not worried about the stuff in the world. We all go through things, amen? amen? And we all need to get a breakthrough, but if we don't change our mind, how can we see which way to go? Stewardship, amen? amen. Also, I had it, amen? When the door opened, I had the faith, but I also had the money. So, if I would have been greedy, I would have killed my seed. Yes. Amen. When the door came, I had the finances. Right. Yes. Listen, when the door came, I had the finances. Uh -huh. But if I thought of worldly and said, why well, I'm going to give all my money up, uh -huh. these people are not going to give the money back anyway. Uh -huh. If I was thinking worldly, yes. I would have missed it. Amen. But since I wasn't, and I listened to what the Lord said, phase one, do what I don't get your house. I gave up my own house. I purchased in my own house to get this house. That lets you know what type of pastor I am. I'm not about your money. I use my very own stewardship. I'm trying to get you all mind somewhere. It's going to take some time. Amen. It's going to take some time, but you got to listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you about your own personal household. Being ready when something comes up. Me and my wife, we try not to uh, go too long after not paying bills. We try to keep stuff at a zero balance. So just in case it does get tight, it's okay. It's okay. Amen. The song about faith. We said bills ain't been paid in a month, but we ain't tripping up this stuff. It's all up. You know what I mean? Hey. Sometimes you ain't got it. But you got a budget better. Maybe I can't go over my mom's new house every day. Maybe I can't go over my cousin's new house every day. Maybe if I know $20 will get me 84 miles, I can't go over there today. You got a budget better. People are like, man, so what you doing, man? Counting these miles on this gas. Because all I got is twenty dollars until next week. The reason why I preach the way I preach is because I want you to get out of what you in. The Lord gives me these words so He can get you from this place to this place. Amen. One time, I always tell this testimony. I only had seven dollars. I made at the shop. Had to drive all the way back to East St. Louis on E on the red sign. But I know. 84 miles, I can make it there and back. Oh, yeah. But it was faith. Yes. Had nobody. That's why I always tell my wife, babe, y'all got me, but I ain't got nobody but God. Oh, I ain't got no partners who give me nothing. Oh, you know what I mean? We don't got no 501c3. Oh, we don't got no grants. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? We got the Lord. We got the Lord. Oh, and I listen to him, so I'm letting y'all know what I have done so y'all can change your life. Yes. Amen? And that's what it's going to do. It's about stewardship. Yes. Stewardship. He wants your mind to get different. You know what, maybe this year we ain't doing no trip. We putting that money up. You know what, this year I ain't buying me a car every season on tax season. You know, maybe I need to put something up. Let me get me a new portfolio. I'm about to get me a portfolio this year. Hey, Amen. I said everything is done, Lord. I ain't spending nothing else because I didn't did everything I had to do. 
I done gave up everything to get everything. And now I got everything. Now I'm about to build back up because I'm a good steward. He said, I can trust you with that. You wasn't greedy. You didn't let that kill your seed. Amen. I should have told you. I see this banner. You know how you go to the club? I could have had my own bread like. You know what I mean? I'm banded up. Come on over here. You pretty. You know how you go to the club? You need my drink.
God said, we got to do this. We only had $400 to our, our name 38 months ago. From 400 I saved up 8000 I had two SUVs. Got that SUV. They said, you got it. I said, okay, how much I need to put down? They said, nothing. Your credit is excellent. In the process of me getting everything together, I got my credit together. Yes, yes. Pastor has a 757. Uh -huh. Not trying to toot my own home, but I'm letting you know, in order for you to walk in kingdom, you got to be kingdom holistically. Yes, right. Amen. Right. You don't want to just stay in that place that you were in last year. Right. The devil is alive. We want to be blessed holistically. Yes. So when somebody call your name up, they ain't got a second guess. I can't give you this. I'm expecting for big things. Because I got a big heart. I want to do big things. Amen. For the community. Some people are like, well, I'm going to do that. I'm doing it for the community. I want the Lord to come in. If it ain't dealing with God, I ain't in it. Yeah. Point blank, period. But it all started in stewardship. If I could bless you with this, I'm going to bless you. And it was all a test. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to see if you're still going to be working even when it's a drop going on. I'm going to see if you still be working even though you got a crib and y'all ain't got no washer, dry, or refrigerator. You're going to still trust me. I said, Lord God, I need $600. He sent them clients in. Ooh, 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 ooh. We got, before we even moved in, we had washer, dryer, and refrigerator. Because I said, Lord God, this is what I need. He know what you need, but he want to see if you're going to ask him. If you need to change, Lord God, I need to change. God want to teach kingdom, y'all. Kingdom. It says, what seeds am I sowing and what I'm not doing? Amen. I began to worship God more and dedicate things he would give me back to him. My gifts, my talents, my money, my business, I gave it back to God. Amen. Everything that I have is God in it. Rapping, God in it. Borrowing, God in it. Filming, God in it. So everything that I got will prosper. Amen. People like, man, do what? I said, man, I have to do this for the Lord. To bring Him glory. Anything I do, good morning, praise the Lord. You know what I mean? The Lord is good. He can, he can make a way. You got the victory. Amen. Because anything you put God in, it has to bless. But it has to be balance. Balance. God, family, church. If you want to be in greedy ship, get off. Get off of that ship. Amen. Because greed, say this with me. Greed will kill your seed. Glory to God. I heard this dude on Facebook say, I think he was another pastor. He says, we spend 300 on outfit, 200 on shoes, 50 on drinks wow. before the club, 20 on weed, 20 to get a door in the club. I'll take it a, 40, uh, a little further. Then get drunk, then almost shot and killed, and then say we had a ball. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm turning it up. Hey, man, I'm getting it in. Look at that. Look at these products or something. <laughs> Gucci belts, you know what I mean? And we did all that and almost lost our life and said we had it wrong. I didn't did that. I ain't telling you nothing. I ain't did. I'm in the club. I'm kidding. Pastor, I'm telling you how old I am. I'm in timeout back in the day. I stayed at the bar because I had a lot of haters. If y'all thought I had haters, nah, I had haters back in the day. So I'm at the bar just looking, you know what I mean? Man, I had too many of the restroom. As I'm going to the restroom, Little guy, Mexican guy, came out, started busting that thing right in front of my face, shooting at another guy. I said, whoa. Another time, got shot at a car at gunpoint. I'm driving my car. He pull up, none of y'all move. Start blasting the car. I'm like, man, I'm high and drunk. I'm instantly sober. Yeah. Said, man, that was lucky. No, that was the blood of Jesus. Hey, man, that's the blood. I've been fighting. I've been shot at four times. Ain't nothing hit me. But I know other people who got popped and they and they they gone. Yeah. Case in point, man. Uh, in 2011, I'm a barber, so I may do deceased too. Uh, it was a young man. He was 23 years old. His funeral was on December 14. I got saved at 23 years old on December 14. I survived many guns, but I'm pres I'm, I'm presenting this man for his family one more day. Uh -huh. On that day that I got saved. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, this could have been you. He said, this could have been you. And I said, Lord God, I thank you. I said, Lord God, I thank you. Amen. Because I could have been took out when I was in the club. Amen. I even tried to murder somebody, but the gun wouldn't shoot. I could have did those things, but the Lord said, not your will, but let my will be done. Yeah. That's all that stuff is, is a trap. Yeah. It's all it is, is a trap. Yeah. Glory to God. 
God. Hallelujah. So the killer part today, what I'm talking about, we're talking about spiritual food. Amen. We want to break through and give you uh, a place of mind. Amen. So you can understand this is real. Amen. But also, when you come to get spiritual food, amen, you don't give nothing financially, but you feel peace. Stewardship. God is looking for his sheep. But also, he is not playing with part-time lovers or part-time workers or bogus stewards. Man, this is the Lord's heart, y'all. I don't just get up here saying nothing I want to say. Amen. Because if I don't say it, you see this red? It's going to be on my hands. And who blood is, it's going to be y'all blood. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> it says, God is looking for his sheep, but he's not playing with part-time lovers or part-time workers or bogus stewards. Amen. He has been speaking to me and dealing with me about this. Amen. It's time to get things in order. Yes, yes, yes. Man, to, to feel God's heart and to, to listen to what he says. He said, get my house in order. Amen. He's coming back, but you must be found working. Come on. Man, it just, it just hurts my heart. Amen. It's many people just leaving us. Amen. But they're not being found working. Discipleship. One who embraces or assists in spreading teachings of another. An active adherent as most of a movement or philosophy. Amen. It says, go make disciples. That's what we do. We have to preach the good news. Amen. We have to encourage. We have to equip. We have to challenge. Now, this is challenge today. And then we have to launch people out into the world for Jesus. We're doing this to clean out that old way of thinking, y'all. Amen. We don't want to live month to month or check to check. Amen. We don't want to do that. Amen. Go on a fast from kicking it sometimes. Save that money. Amen. Don't don't go over there this week. Save that money. You ain't giving to the church no way. Come on. I was real at the same time though. I'm just keeping it real, y'all. I want y'all to be blessed. And I ain't no. That's just the truth. It says Matthew 28 and 20. Message. Message Bible. It says, Jesus undeterred went right ahead and gave his charge. He says, God or, uh, was it, authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out, train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life. Mark it by the baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then instruct them in the practice of all I command you. I will be with you as you do this day after day. Amen. Right up until the end of the age. Amen. So that's what I'm trying to do is get you guys ready for what the Lord wants you to be blessed in the kingdom. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Amen. That's all in scripture. Discipleship and fellowship. Stewardship. And get off that greedy ship. Get off that lack ship. Amen. Get off that doubt ship. The ship of frustration. He wants you off of that. Amen. It says, change has to take place, exclamation point, so you cannot stay the same. Amen? So while you own this job called life and you're working in the kingdom, just know your work is not in vain. You will be rewarded. People say, man, why am I going to give all my money to the church? I ain't going to be rewarded. You will be rewarded. Why am I going to bless somebody in front of me who bought their food or somebody behind me? They ain't going to give me nothing. It's a blessing to be a good Samaritan. Amen? One time, my friend told me to go to Starbucks, right, and try this drink out. I said, man, I want to try a very, very hot biscuit. And he said, get a trencher. I ordered it. The lady in front of me paid for it. I said, wow, that's a blessing. I said, that's a blessing. That's how I want to be. I want to bless some other people. Amen? It's about being a blessing to others. Because you know it's kingdom. And she's just probably trying to do something nice. But since I know stuff nice is kingdom, I'm going to do kingdom. Amen? I'm going to do kingdom because I'm going to be a good steward. I'm going to be a good steward of what the Lord gives me. And that's what I want you guys to know. Be a good steward of your time. Be a good steward of your money. Amen? Be a good steward of your, your personal time with the Lord. Amen? Because he's looking to see if you're going to clock in. Amen. You know how you uh, clock in and put your little thing time for it? He's looking to see if you're going to clock in. Hey, Amen. This is not every day. This might be when you wake up. Lord God, I want to thank you. What are my steps? You know what I mean? When I come to church, clock in. So then he's going to ask you, where you been all year? I've been at church. I praise the Lord. So I'm looking at the time for it. Let me see. Three times. Come on. You want full benefits? <laughs> you want insurance? You, want time. you don't get these benefits. Come on. People want the work or the money for the work, but put part time in. 
Yeah. He said it gotta be kingdom. Yeah. You, you, what's up, baby? You gotta uh, you gotta love God holistically. Yeah. You gotta love God all the time, not part time. We just want to get yourself together or have a good time, Amen. Yeah. Because you can have a good time in the Lord, Amen. Yeah. Uh, that's why when we worry, I say, hey, don't turn up today. Try something different. Uh, I don't be like, man, Pastor, I don't want to hear that. I'm turning up. Uh, but I'm just trying to, hey, let you know that. The master is soon to come. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? It says in the last days, people will be drunk, people will be married, people are going to be kicking it, they're going to be doing what they want to do. They don't want to hear godly kingdom principles. They don't want to, you know, do all this stuff because they listen to the world. Amen. They listen to the world. They see what's going on. What's the new trend? Amen. How can I get this? You know, but the Lord says, I want to change all that. I'm soon to come. We was in a revival in March. We was in prayer. I seen the hooves of the horsemen coming to the earth. If anybody know what that means, that's talking about the end time. It's going to be a pale horse, it's going to be a red horse, it's going to be a white horse, famine, etc., etc. And when the Lord showed me that, he said, I'm soon to come. So when I seen that, and if you guys didn't know, Pastor, the end time prophet as well. Hey Amen. I speak about the end times very much. Yes. Amen, because that's what we live in. Amen. I have dreams and prophetic visions and all that type of stuff. Amen. But I want to let you guys know our time is running out, so we have to be a good steward of what we have. Any money that comes into my house, I say, Lord God, what you want me to do? Even to the very thing he said, don't deposit a thing. Uh -huh. And I was short a hundred, because I'm trying to think about mine. How can I get this extra hundred? He said, I'm going to show you what type of God I am. Come on. You don't make a deposit. I'm going to make a deposit. <laughs> Two years of doing ministry as a church. 28 months doing it as Bible study. We started in 2012 of uh, what, 14 of February. Then we had our first service, all by faith. Amen. And I said, Lord God, have your way. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but have your way. As you lead, I'm going to go. Whatever you tell me to say, I'm going to say. Because he wants us to be blessed. Amen. Amen. If you guys been wanting to sow seed into the ministry or, or give us a donation, amen, you can do so. You can go to slugroot.com and hit up the donate button and that goes straight to our PayPal. But also, there's a new app on your phone called Givelify. Yeah, Givelify. If you download that app, Givelify, you'll be able to, to sow seed to us or give us a, a, a seed of appreciation or anything you like to do. Amen. So check us out on Givelify. And our church is New Beginnings Outreach International, Alton, Illinois. You'll see me and my wife's face on there. And you'll see our phone number, and address, etc. You can give as much as you want. Amen. So tell a friend and tell a friend. Hey, we're going to give to New Beginnings Outreach International on Givelify. Download the app. Amen. See you soon. Peace. Hey, check us out on the web. We have a Facebook page. Check us out on Facebook page, facebook.com, MBOI Alton. On there, you can find a lot of updates. You can check out all our videos. We post up good inspirational things. People review. Hey, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com, MBOI Alton. Like our page. Don't just stop there. Check us out, sluggeroo.com www.sluggeroo.com S-L-U-G-G-E-R-R-O-O.com On there, you can watch our live services at 12.05, right there, live services. You can check out what we're talking about in our church, calendar, etc. You can also book Sluggeroo and Lady Roo to come to your church and minister through the ministry of their gospel rep. Have my Twitter feeds on here, YouTube, all our videos. Beautiful picture of me and my wife. Tune in. God bless.